Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I think this is part E. E is an echo, but it is going to be Acts chapter 10. We're going to take a look at Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God, now that's what the series is, right? Angels. An angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you get a soldier that's afraid, you better, yeah, I think I'd be scared too, you know? An angel come? Oh, yeah. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Huh, wow. Did you know your prayers can be a memorial before God? Did you know that uh, when you give alms or charity to the poor, it could be a memorial before God? You know? Uh, that's why all these rich people are rich because they wouldn't give you they wouldn't give you nothing no it's a shame but uh it's the way it goes you know when you love money more than you love people i've said it before and i'll say it again somebody once said to me you know what the difference between a good person and a bad person i said no what he said a good person loves people and uses money. And a bad person loves money and uses people. So there you have it. I can't take credit for that one. So, so thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Simon Peter, Apostle Peter. You know, you know, Peter the fisherman, right? Verse six. He lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. He's going to tell you what to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. So evidently, this guy is a guy of means. Maybe he was a fairly high-ranking officer. You know, he's he's not a just run-of-the-mill soldier. You know, he's he's got servants. You had to have some money to have servants. So you know, servants don't work for free. At least, uh, not unless it's at the edge of uh, edge of a sword. You know, then they might do it. But yeah. So, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. So here it is. He sees a, you know, like a sheet and it's tied at the four corners and it's being let down. 
wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. So you're talking unclean food. When, you, when you're talking about creeping things, uh, you're talking unclean food. Definitely. Uh, the Lord told you what was clean food and what was unclean food. So, you know, rats are unclean. Vultures are unclean. I have no desire to eat rats or vultures. Zero. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So Peter followed uh, the law of clean meats and clean foods. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, three times. And the vessel were received, and the vessel were received up again into heaven. Now every every almost every single person I've ever heard preach on this said, Oh, See, now we could eat pork, we could eat rats, we could eat vultures, we could eat all those things. They've been cleansed. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. But is that what the is it is that what this is all about? Uh let's find out. All right, so this was done thrice, three times, and the vessel re was received up again into heaven. Three times. Keep that in mind. Very important point. Verse 17. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Ah, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Three men seek thee. The three men that uh, the, the, the Roman centurion sent are looking for him. Ah, remember the sheet was sent up three times? But while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? You know, wh why are you guys here looking for me? That's the Bob translation. Verse 22. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. So Cornelius has his family his relatives, and his very closest friends. There. And as, Peter's, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, 
I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Verse 28. Now here's, here's, where, here's where Peter explains the vision. And he, Peter, said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Does the vision make sense now? The sheet was lowered three times for the one each time for the three men. The vision wasn't telling him to eat pig and uh, rats and and vultures. No. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Yes, God is letting. Now they'll tell you, oh, well, this guy, you know, they're, they're non-Jews. Well, they may not be of the tribe of Judah, but they're probably, they got to be Israelites. My, you know, Judah's only one tribe. There was 11 other tribes. They'll never tell you about that, though. No, uh-uh. All right, but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. You know, why, why did you call me here? And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, an angel, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard. So the angel's talking to him and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter, he is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well said that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God? Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. The quick and the dead. Well, the dead are not very quick, so the quick have to be those that are alive. You know, even a snail is quick compared to somebody, you know, something that's dead, right? So, the judge of the quick and the dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. And what's that name? Uh, Jesus? Yeah. 
While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. Now, what's a circumcision? The Jews, the real Jews, not the fake ones, but the real ones. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles, the nations, also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, languages, and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost, as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed them, uh, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. May I recommend reading Jeremiah 3 and verse 8, where God divorced Israel, but not Judah, but God divorced Israel, divorced them. And then you can read Jeremiah 31, 31, where God says he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Judah and the house of Israel, both. And if you still think the Gentiles are non-Israelites, may I suggest my a playlist on you only have I known I think it's about three hours of proving that the Gentiles are actually divorced Israel which is why in angels part D I showed you that I think it's Acts 8 that uh, Stephen said that the church was in the wilderness with Moses Old Testament yeah so we shall see. All right, I'm going to close this out and make this uh, Acts chapter 10. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.